Hello everyone, my name is Nikki and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we are going to be doing my January bullet journal spread and I'm so excited to bring this to you. This is the first bullet journal spread of the whole entire year and I feel very proud and happy after doing this. It is inspired by mushrooms, pieces of nature and all, but with a little bit of a whimsical twist. A while ago, when I was trying to think of a bullet journal theme, I had some ideas for an Alice in Wonderland inspired theme, but I did not go through with the idea, so I thought I'd revisit that and just add a bit more of a natural tone. So you can see a lot of odd, but weirdly wonderful things in the spread and I hope that you all enjoy. Don't forget that you can vote on the poll in the cards of this video to help me decide which kind of spread I should do next month. So don't forget to click or tap on that little eye in the top corner of the video and vote. The first thing that I'm going to be doing is drawing these hands and in the fingers you can see some mushrooms are growing out of the hands and also along the arms. Then I'm just adding other pieces of nature just like little plants and again more mushrooms around and trying to add a lot of detail. I also I always use my uni pin fine liners in these drawings, but this spread I used pretty much all of my selection. I used blacks, dark greys, light greys, and browns. So for the plants in the far background, I did them in a light grey. The plants in the middle, I did them in a dark grey, and the ones most far forward, they are in the darkest colours. I added some more browns into this spread because I felt that that would really help add a bit more natural tone because my bullet journal spreads are always really monochromatic, so I thought that it would just add that little bit more of a warm earthy tone. Also because this page is full of mushrooms and plants I decided to fill in some of the blank spaces with just a few lines to look like grass and other elements. Just to add a little bit extra detail and fill in any blank spaces then I'm also using this light grey uni pin fine liner to add some shading. Then using some ink and stamps I stamped the word January in the top left corner and that's it for the introduction page. Next we move on to my calendar and my goals and tasks. Going to be seeing a lot of changes in the spread because I found that a lot of the things I had been doing last year aren't necessarily working for me at the minute. So it's always important that when you're designing your bullet journal spreads, you design them for you and what's most useful for you. While I do love to take a very artistic approach and do focus a lot on the design, bullet journals are meant for practicality. So always feel free to adapt your styles and your designs that best suit you in your daily life. I decided to come back to one of my original designs for the first little double page spread in the bullet journal spread and this has a little calendar and a section for goals and another section for tasks. I do this because I love to set myself goals to work towards like new year's resolutions but every single month. For example once I complete a number of courses on Duolingo I'll do that. Want to read a book I'll do that. Having goals set in certain time frames it just really helps you focus and be able to complete them. And then also tasks because I cannot function without a to-do list it's really helpful and I can also list down everything that I need to do and get done. One key thing that I love to do when I'm doing these kind of drawings is to make sure that some of the pieces that I'm drawing look further forward than the ones in the background. So I'm experimenting with using different colours, doing the ones in the background in a lighter shade and the ones in the foreground a lot more darker. But also it does help to try and thicken the lines in the ones that are further forward and make the ones in the background have thinner lines. This really does help and I feel like this is something I could have improved a lot in this bullet journal spread. After all, there are always teaching points and things that we could have done better. I just felt a little bit out of practice because it has been a while since I've actually drawn a new bullet journal spread and done art like this. But anyway, you can also check out the description down below so you can see all of my inspirations, wherever I got any of my ideas from, anything that would have helped me come up with these ideas or have been used as reference. So please do check out all the links in the description down below. I find that one of the most amazing things about doing this kind of spread is that there are so many different types of mushrooms and different types of plants and you can use absolutely any kind of photo for reference and nothing is ever perfect or ever the same so you can draw things in so many different ways represent them in different ways look into different species and different types so now we move on to the mood and water trackers and these are usually some of my favorite pages i wanted to do something very simple because i just really wanted to go back to my bullet journal roots as i felt that recently some of the trackers that i've been doing are quite complex and complicated and not really the most usable or accessible. So I decided to take this idea of doing a mushroom but flipped on its back 
and so you can like see the inside of it and basically split it into 31 days and then just do a couple extra lines to make it look a bit more mushroomy and basically the idea is depending on my mood I will colour in one of these segments with a Tombow brush pen, a lighter grey for a better day and a darker grey for a lower day. So I then labelled which day is which and there we go that's the mood tracker very simple and then at the other side we have the water tracker and again I went back to my roots and just did a simple grid labelled each day and I have eight slots for basically one slot for a cup of water because I am still dehydrated as heck and I need to drink a lot more. So this is really good, it's simplistic, easy to use and fill in and I just added into the empty space a lot of different mushrooms. Also, especially in this part of the spread, I started to add some other plants so you can see some leafy plants and then also just some of the obscure pieces peeking through. Like in the last page, you would have seen mushrooms with legs. In this page, you can see mushroom with an eye. Just something oddly human about the mushrooms. I really like the way that this looked and I absolutely fell in love with the sort of design and theme. So I do hope that you guys like it too. Recently, as I've been planning out the sprouts of my bullet journals and all the different kinds of pages, that I'm adding in and designs. I always wonder what kind of spreads you guys like to have in your bullet journals and how many pages are they usually? Because I know people like to do all sorts of different trackers and they might have a diary section and day-to-day -day things. I was just really curious about how you guys use your journals and what kind of things do you include in them. Maybe give me some ideas of things that might work for me or things that really work for you that might be a little bit different. So please do comment down below because I love to share thoughts and I really want to hear how you guys utilize this. And and if you guys plan, because I usually call these videos plan with me's, so I wonder if you guys actually do have your own bullet journal spreads and you do create them while you watch my videos or whether you just like to watch them. But all of that aside, I'm just continuing to just add a little bit more detail, a few more brown tones to add that extra more natural addition of colour into this spread. finishing off the grid by just drawing all of the blocks and the squares trying to make sure that I get all of it right. I think one of the moments of panic is when I accidentally do a box more or a box less than I should have done and it's just such a pain but yeah, it's always good to double check and then I added this little bit in the background with the Tombow brush pen so it stands out a little bit because it's kind of getting lost on the page. Now we move on to two other trackers and this is my expenses tracker and my YouTube tracker. My YouTube tracker used to be a social media tracker but I just reduced it down to YouTube because I'm still getting back into Instagram and I need to actually get myself going on there. I'm just taking it slow, getting back into YouTube first. So expenses. I basically have a grid, section with a date, a description of what I got and then how much it cost or perhaps how much I earned or how much I got. Then I have a total at the end of the month so I can see how much much I'm earning or how much I'm losing and stuff like savings or how much money I'm putting into savings and what the savings might be whether that's for like a rainy day or whether that's for university funds and then the other page so at the bottom of this page I'm then drawing more mushrooms one with an eye and then one with the legs just trying to spice up the different designs of the mushroom tops and also all of the different patterns and then we move on to the YouTube tracker so I basically have two blocks one is an idea block and another one is a what I'll need block I always have a lot of ideas and you guys comment things that you want to see so I have to list them so I will not forget and I have a really nice idea bank building up. Then on the opposite side I have what I'll need so basically anything that I'll need, any resources for example if I'm going to be customising a top and painting a picture on a t-shirt or customising some jeans and sewing I need to add what I need. And then also at the bottom I have a tracker for my subscribers and the views which I add in at the beginning of the month and end of the month just to track my growth. Thank you. 
And we move on to the next double page spread. And on the left, we have my homework tracker. And on the right, we have my revision tracker. These are two things that I always consistently add into my bullet journal spreads because I'm always getting homework and there are always tests coming up. So it's great to be able to keep track on them, make sure I'm getting everything done and getting it done on time and in good time as well. No last minute homework because that is the worst. Keeping on top of due dates and then also revision so I can plan ahead with the upcoming tests part of the bottom so I know where my tests are and then I can set revision tasks and make sure I'm well prepared and what everything is well planned out because it's great to just get all of that revision done as soon as possible rather than leaving it to the last minute because we want good grades. For the decorations on this page, I decided to add a part running down the center in the middle because I felt that was quite a bit of a blank space. It is this lovely plant and then I also drew some eyes and the eyes are more open at the bottom and then they start to close as they go up. Then I also added some decorative mushrooms in the corners of the pages and also keeping up with that theme of eyes, I also drew some little eye plants which I thought looked cute. Because this page is a lot more full on and I do need to utilize a lot of the space, I kept the decorations and the drawings a lot more minimal and really downsized them. The homework tracker, I'll mainly be using the top section most likely, and then also for the tests, there aren't many tests at this time of year so I could afford to use some of that space. But next we're moving on to a new addition to my bullet journal spreads, and this is my happy space, because recently I've been having a lot of downtime and that's why I've taken some time off YouTube, so I decided that I should add in a little space where I can just doodle and vent and write things down because I love to let out my feelings in just like writing little pieces and maybe bullet pointing things that make me happy or doing some doodling and drawing because that's very relaxing for me but on the opposite page and then decided to add this drawing to sort of close up and finish the bullet journal spread because I'm now no longer doing the diary section I wasn't coming to it daily and I just felt that it kind of lacked importance and use because I was using more of the previous pages throughout the spread but while I was just looking through some art pieces I found this particular piece by an artist called someone and this is called dangle I absolutely fell in love with this artist's art style and all the different drawings and illustrations illustrations that they do. It is so peculiar and so interesting, also obscure but just oddly fascinating and I absolutely adored their style. So as I was looking more into it I found this particular piece which is called Dangle and I absolutely fell in love with it. So I thought I would draw something inspired by that and referencing that and add it into my bullet journal because that is something that I really really do love. So I did my own version. I looked up some reference photos of different lilies of the valley which is the plant that this is based around and tried to draw a slightly different version inspired by the other photos that I found of lilies of the valley adding in the leaf and some extra pieces but yes this was inspired by that artist all of their social medias that I can find will be linked down below so you can check them out and please do support them their artwork is fascinating and I loved it so I decided to include something inspired by them in the bullet journal and that is it for my bullet journal spread for January I hope that you all enjoyed and you all like it so now we're going to be doing the flip through and this is my introduction page to welcome the month of January and begin my bullet journal for the year. Following that we then have my January calendar and a section for me to write down my goals for that particular month and then also a space to write down all of my tasks and to do's. Following that we then have my trackers and I have a tracker for my mood and also a tracker for how much water I'm drinking. Eight cups is the goal each day. And after that, we also have my expenses tracker and my YouTube tracker. So I can track how much I'm spending and how much I'm earning each month. Then also I can track all of my ideas for YouTube, what I'll need and my growth. Then we have my homework planner and my revision planner. So I can write down all of the homework and tasks that I need to do for school and the due dates so I can keep on top of that work and revision with upcoming tests so I can prepare well in advance. Then we have my happy space for me to write down and indulge in things that make me happy. And then on the following page, we have this amazing art piece inspired by the artist Song Won. I 
I used a 30 centimeter ruler, my Le Monde bullet journal, and then also uni pen fine liners in black, dark gray, light gray, and brown, and used a Tombow brush pen and some ink stamps. So that was it for the bullet journal spread and I hope that you all enjoyed. If you did, please give the video a huge thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to receive a notification when I post a new video. You can also vote for what kind of spreads you'd like to see next in my bullet journal. So I will see you guys next week. Bye!